Well, it's been over four weeks, I think more than four weeks, that I've been stuck inside this house. And thanks only to the world's largest dictatorship that uses the best of communism, though sorry, the worst of communism and the worst of capitalism, mixes it together and dreams of ruling this world. I'm talking about the uh, bulky old gentleman uh, from Beijing uh, who, despite Mao Zedong's uh, cultural revolution, and of course, do we remember his wife, did not change their ways. Today, six billion people are at the mercy of a dictatorship where there is no free press, where no one can report, where the doctor that discovered the disease disappeared, died, another woman disappeared, and suddenly every foreign reporter in the People's Republic of China had to be sent out. Thank goodness to our left-wing apologist who, oh my God, with the fall of communism, they just can't get over the fact that there's one last holding place, hold out for them, the success of China. I'm talking to my friends on the left who are blinded, who can't see what's happening around the globe. And what happens when a single nation that has contempt for people of color like me, or the Africans who are being beaten up in southern China, simply look towards dominating of the world, buying up entire mountains of tin in Peru, taking over and occupying Pakistan's already occupied country, Balochistan, getting a foothold in Sri Lanka, buying port lands in Chittagong near uh, Bangladesh, on the east coast of uh, Africa. And lo and behold, who do they get as the top guy in the World Health Organization that is supposed to monitor and be above all the machinations of these dictatorships? None else than the Director General, my Director General, somebody, some people have been saying he's the Deceptive General of the World Health Organization. Dr. Tedros. Who knew that this guy, Dr. Tedros, was involved in terrorist activities within Ethiopia? As a health minister, he covered up the cholera uh, epidemic and said, oh, it's just people in Africa have loose motion, so, you know, it'll go away, it's diarrhea. Nobody knows about that because they got this man onto the top position China got this man on the top position. He was part of the pro-Chinese communist uh, groups in Ethiopia, fought amongst many throughout Mengistu, took over, became health minister, foreign minister, you name it. And by the way, he was born in Eritrea, Asmara, the capital of Eritrea, where Ethiopia and Eritrea also had a war. This man had seen more bloodshed on his hands, more fighting, and we have eye and ear witness accounts of how he went to Rome to put forward through NGOs a positive spin on his particular communist guerrilla group. That was linked up with first the international communist order, but after the Soviet Union collapsed, boom, we just changed our masters. They became subservient to China. China rewarded them. Now he's the WHO chief. Nobody knew about his guerrilla activities and his uh, involvement in international terror till I wrote my column a few days ago. Now imagine this. This one person has influence over, guess who? The Canadian top health official. <laughs> there are people around the world saying, oh, including the Director General of the WHO, who says, no, this transmission doesn't go from human to human. It goes from bats to dogs and dogs, and it was some of these wet markets, and that satisfies a latent racism towards the Chinese people. So all we've got to do is say, oh, the Chinese will eat anything, as if we don't eat anything. We eat cows, ducks, birds, anything we get on. We even stuff animals, lions' heads and place them in our homes. So let's not all be too sanctified. Oh, we are civilized, we respect animals and the Chinese, mm, no. 
our relationship with the animal world has been. We've lived together, we've eaten them, they've eaten us. Some they left over and we have to tolerate right now. Here's the point. If this man stays at the head of the WHO and the international agencies monitoring law and order, if we can bring the Liberian dictators to the court and punish them, if we can get the Siberian dictators who caused deaths of tens of thousands, this man is involved and China is involved in the killing of, what's the point now, about two million people are affected and over 10, 20,000 people are dead. I think more 20,000 dead just in uh, United States. It is so easy for us to mock Trump, but no, we dare not criticize an African because, oh, it would be racism, right? So hiding behind that protection provided by being a visible minority, I can do anything. I can be in Congo, kill 40 million people, and nobody will cover it because every reporter will say, ah, oh, what if they tell me I'm a racist? Oh, no, we shall not touch it. it reminds me of a friend of mine who said any time you drive in Toronto and a cop stops you, for speeding, all you've got to do is pull down the window and say, Assalamu alaikum. Which cop is going to punish you if you then claim he's got Islamophobia? I'm a minority. Racism in Canada. You should try it, by the way. Because white converts to Islam carry a higher hierarchy. You know, they're top F-16 of the Muslim parade that goes on around the world. I brought in the Muslim issue because <laughs> there are nut cases in India and Pakistan. It's Friday today. The law says you can't gather more than five people in a, in a room, three feet apart. What happened in India and Pakistan? Large amounts, tens of thousands of people prayed in the mosque because the mullah said, it doesn't affect us, we are Muslims, superior grade human beings. Somehow when Allah is throwing all those missiles down on us, you know, those coronavirus thing, bing, we got cover. We got radar guided missiles that stop that. Allah protects us and Allah destroys those who do not follow Islam or the Shia, the damned Shia that we Sunni Muslims call as Jews. And all of this is acceptable because no one on CNN dare touch that issue. No one goes to India to report on what happened. I've never seen a video clip from India on any Western news network where the mullahs are saying, do not obey the orders of the government. There are places in Toronto where people have said their prayers on rooftops of buildings. How cute. The country says, do not gather together. We always have an answer. We go to the top of the ceiling. Nobody's watching. There are pictures of that floating around. Let me conclude by saying, if the Chinese killers responsible for spreading this disease, hiding its effects, lying to us, I'm talking of China's leaders. I'm not talking of Chinese. Because Chinese exist in Taiwan and Singapore and Hong Kong. And they are the best fighters against the disease because they took a stand where the rest of the world could not. They knew Beijing was lying and they had no such complexes as saying, oh, I will be seen as anti-Chinese because they themselves were Chinese. For heaven's sake, Singapore has the best record. Taiwan has produced the emails sent to WHO that said that this disease spreads from human to human contact. Stop blaming the bats and the rats and the jokes about what people do at a wet market. It came from a lab. The doctor that said it's out in the open, stop everything, disappeared, later died. The first woman who came out has disappeared. And what sort of a country has no foreign reporters? A country that has plenty to hide. So somebody's got the guts to say from today onwards, I'm not going to buy anything made in China. I'm not going to touch an iPhone that was made over there unless China faces the wrath of the Western 
and the African and the Asian consumer, China is going to walk all over us, not just in Ethiopia, Eritrea, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Pakistan, you name it. And do you know what was the first act of Dr. Tedros, His Almighty Majesty? When he became the Director General, the first thing he did was ask his pal, the Zimbabwean dictator, that 90-year-old monster who has killed more than anyone in Africa, to become the spokesperson. What's not the spokesperson, but the ambassador or something of that sort. Goodwill ambassador for the WHO. Goodwill ambassador? Mugabe? Are you crazy? And yet nobody spoke up because, oh, we can't talk against an African dictator because then we'd be considered racist. Yesterday, 16 people were shot dead by the Nigerian police for disobeying the law of gathering together. In India, now Nigeria is a Muslim majority country. In India, the cops got beaten up by the mullahs. Doctors were thrown, bricks were thrown on the head. A doctor nearly died in that. Who is instigating this? Because China has a few puppies roaming around. Some would say even concubines, you know. And one of the best ones is Pakistan. It spread its disaster around the world. And nobody can stop them. Because who want, which white guy wants to be known as a racist? When Trump is there, we can rain down everything on him. Make fun of him. But can you make fun of King Salman? No, 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 no. Very rich man. Can you make fun of any other person? Can you do something about Mahathir Muhammad, who invited all these people and spread the disease over there? No. It's time to get out of a hypocritical middle-class existence because the world is never ever going to be the same again. Mocking the poor and s imagine every essential worker determined by the Canadian or the United States government or anywhere in the world is either a sweeper, a cleaner, an ambulance driver, a delivery guy, a nurse or a doctor at the most. When did you hear an essential worker is the assistant manager sitting on the 15th floor of Eaton Centre. No, he's not essential. You can live without him. No CEO is essential. No managing director is essential. No billionaire is essential. What is essential is you and me and the rest of people who want to live a normal life in a liberal democracy and have a vote as part of a mandate to run civilization. The people who've been skimming off 90% of the wealth of the United States is in 10% of the population. And that's the US because the issue figures. I can tell you China, I think 90% of the wealth there is in 1% of the Communist Party Politburo members. And remember, these guys are the geniuses. They use communism to run the worst form of capitalism. And you could put 10 million Muslims in concentration camps and nobody in Al-Pakistan or Al-Iran or Al-Saudi Arabia dare say to China, you are committing genocide on a Muslim people. I'm talking about the Uyghurs. Everything and everyone seems to be for sale. The higher the price, they can buy your consciousness. Please. If you've got to shut down a business, shut down the business of selling your conscience. No more. Because these guys have got to come down. And no more should Tiananmen Square just be a beautiful picture of one Chinese uh, brave student standing up in front of a tank. Because we've tolerated these monsters who've ruled China, killed millions of people in their own land. And today they have inflicted a worldwide pain. No to China, no Chinese products, no Chinese shirts, nothing at all.
Tell Apple, if you've got a phone made in China, we will not buy it. We got better phones made in Samsung who are manufactured in Bangladesh. By the way, all research development is done off the coast of Bangladesh by Samsung. So why not Samsung? South Korea. Those are the people who finished off right at the start and killed coronavirus. Instead of the WHO puppies, even in Canada, who stood up and said, no, it's not by human to human contact. Too many people have died and a charge of committing genocide on the world's population should be put at the feet and in the hands, preferably handcuffed hands of the Chinese president, the presidium and the politburo of the Chinese Communist Party. Hopefully, in my dreams, this might happen. But when the world wakes up, nobody's going to take this BS so lightly. Take care. Good night. See you next time.